<laughs> it's recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to the oh channel. Goodness. Oh, you can't talk. Oh my gosh. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and I have two special guests. The first important one is Barry Fanalo. <laughs> Little Barry got a haircut. You're so scared, buddy. Isn't he so handsome? Yeah, he is. All right, so that's the second most important one. But my mom is joining us. Everybody, this is Gloria. This is my mom. Um, she taught me how to sew. She did not teach me how to quilt. <laughs> no way. If you've taken a class with me, you know that I always use my mom as an example because she does not know how to quilt the best. But you know, Pro Stitcher can skew and design perfectly into those blocks. Um, mom, when did you start sewing? Oh boy, um, when I was little, my mom used to make our clothes. And uh, so probably when I was about uh, 13, junior high. Ages. Ages ago. <laughs> So, um, we can see we're in front of a new design wall. We're going to be doing our designer series or no, we're not. What are we doing today? Um, oh, we're working with the wide world. We're, uh, they were doing the video too for Bloomer Bust and I am using those wide world designs from Quiltable. Um, this will be pro stitcher heavy video because I'm going to be combining pro stitcher designs. I'm expecting where I'm expecting a delivery. We have new washer dryers coming, so that's what's looking my watch. But um, we're going to be combining those um, quiltable wide roll designs to make kind of like a scrappy um, design in the quilt. You didn't see the quilt because I had already sent it off before you got here, but um, you should see my sewing studio. It's beautiful. Tell them all how great it looks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but this is where I get this. Um, Mom, any important things I'm forgetting? Um, I don't know. Mom, you're supposed to say what, like and subscribe and hit the bell. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> yes, to all. All right, everyone. Uh, remember, you can follow me on Adam So Fun, and that's S E W on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, remember, on YouTube, like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified when new videos drop. She really didn't want to be in the video this long, and it's only been like uh, three minutes. But um, we're going to jump into the actual video. I'm going to be working on um, Pro Stitcher Simulator today because I'll be on my computer because um, I can't really get to my long arm because the room is horrible. But um, sorry about the dings. Uh, smile. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me. Oh, thank um, you for having me. Uh, all right, we'll see you in the video, and I'll see you back at the end. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know you're going to cut a lot out. <laughs> All right, everyone, here we are. Right now, we're in Pro Stitcher Designer. We're going to be working in Pro Stitcher itself because I find that most people don't use Designer, one. And two, sometimes it's easier for me to combine designs there to make sure that those start and end points are right on top of each other. So because of that, I'm going to be working over there to show you how I set that design up because I did do it all over in Pro Stitcher. A few things I wanted to show you. This is the other wide rule set that Quiltable has. So um, you get this triangle and a circle, diamond, um, loops, an ellipse, a rectangle. I call this a transit or a transformer. No, what is it? Whatever those things are in computers, but zigzags, squares, and another triangle on point. The other thing they give you in this set are these spacers, which you're, they're a straight line, nothing fancy. But when you don't have to create it yourself and you can just open it, it will make time go much faster. So this is that uh, wide roll set. These right here are the Bloomer Bust designs. Um, these were the ones that were created special for the Bloomer Bust quilt along with Eva Page quilt designs. And then these are the ones I use to stitch it out. So in this one, you have one leaf, two offset leaves, two leaves together, a flower, and we're calling this a splat. And this is um, mimics the design of the Bloomer Bust quilt. So it was fun to kind of throw that in with the set. So these are these are all the wide rule wide rule designs, and it's like wide rule paper. You know. Um, you get the line and then something popped in it. Um, I really like these because you can mix and match them to create straight lines of different designs, or you can use that one line with some of those spacers, make these offset, 
and then go back in and stitch them out. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So we're gonna jump over to Pro Stitcher. So here we are in Pro Stitcher, and you can see I've already opened four. So I've opened the single leaf, the flower, the splat, the double leaf. So I need the double um, leaf offset. So I'm going to my file tab, design, open. Remember where you saved them. I happen to save them in a specific spot. And I need this alternating leaf design. So I'm going to hit open. So there, and now I have my five designs. I also need some spacers. So I'm going to go file, um, file tab design open. And I'm going to pick up, I can't remember, I think I used a four and a three. Let's just say we're going to do that. I'm going to open a three. It's going to open here. And I'm going to hit drag and move that. And I am working in simulator. Um, I want this off to the side. Oh, don't forget to hit drop. Um, I want this off to the side because I don't, like, it, it, I need it out of the way. I'm going to use it for multiple tasks. And I'm going to file design open. And I'm also going to get a four inch spacer. Or, you know, let's do a five inch spacer. I can't remember the two I used. Um, and if I hit simulate, I can see my five inch spacer, my three inch spacer, and then my five designs. And so this is where I started. All right, so I'm going to select my five inch spacer and just move it out of the way. Why can't I pick this up? Those straight lines are so hard to pick up. So really, a drag and drop is the easiest thing to do. Drag, simulate. It's just weird doing a drag and drop when you don't have a machine. You know what I mean? I'm going to select this one, and we're going to just drag and drop it down here. There we go. Drop. Okay, so let's start with our first one. So we'll just do these double these double leaves. So I'm going to do, um, do them in a few different ways. Like, you know, maybe it is going to be leaf, spacer, leaf. Or leaf, leaf, spacer. So the spacer is going to go either before or after, and some of you know some of them are going to be the same. But the idea is that if these were all lined up, that they would not all be right on top of each other. So for instance, I'm going to use the double leaf and let's say the three inch spacer. So what I, the first thing I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit edit, edit tab and hit duplicate. That just made me a copy of that, that spacer. And if I look over my sidebar, I can see wide rule E to E spacer line three, inch 72. It gives it a number. Oh, three inch 72. Um, it's just going to give it an arbitrary number. So to combine these, I'm going to hit move simulate so I can move my crosshairs. I put my crosshair somewhere that's not on top of any other design just so I don't get confused. And maybe this one is just going to be the, um, let's see, the leaves and then the spacer. So I'm going to select my leaves, modify, reposition. I can reposition and move the end point right to where my crosshairs are. Remember, the crosshairs represent the needle. And in Pro Stitcher, we're always moving designs to our crosshairs, not the other way around. So I'm hitting end point. We see it there. Now I can come select my three inch line. Same thing, modify, reposition, but I want the start point at my needle this time. So now I can select both of them. Oops, I picked up one extra thing. I don't want that. I can, let's see, workspace. I only have one. Let's select multiple and see if I can just get one more. There we are. If I look at the side, I can see I have a group 73 with a double leaf and a spacer. The other thing, I'm going to hit refresh, and I'm going to turn off select multiple. I want to make sure my start point is on the left and my end point is on the right. And now I'm going to hit baseline to freeze those together. And now I should be able to drag and drop this either. Uh, pretty easy. So now this has the original design with an extra three inches. Um, I don't, you don't actually have to add a spacer to all of them. Maybe you leave one that doesn't have a spacer and that's always going to be able to be adjusted right. But there's our first one. All right, so I want to make another one. And this time I'm going to be, do the three inch spacer in front. So I'm going to pick up my three inch spacer, modify tab, oh no, um, edit tab and duplicate. 
it makes my copy and it's gonna put it in my crosshairs, but I want this in front. So I'm gonna to go to my modify tab, reposition, I'm gonna use endpoint on my spacer. And this gets also gets a little hard because the black line is under the green line. So you just have to be aware. I'll select maybe my flower and I'm gonna hit start point. And now the start point of my flower is on the end point of my spacer. Let's select both of those carefully. There we are. I'm gonna use simulate to get this out of the way and look, what, look what's going on. My start point and end point are on the same place because it wants to start stitching the flower first and then jump all the way back and stitch that. We do not want this. I repeat, we do not want this. So if I go to my workspace, I see this group. It's the flower and the spacer line. We need the spacer line to stitch first. So I could select the flower. When you select it, it's gonna turn green and I can just hit the down arrow and that will fix it. I'm gonna hit up and put it back. Or I could select the line, it turns red. Did I say it turned green? It turns red. Um, and I can use these arrows down here to change the order. So I'm just gonna push up. And when the start point is on the left and the end point is on the right, that's what we're looking for. And that's when we can go and hit our buddy baseline. Now I'm going to move this one out of the way and do the same thing, maybe the splat. Let's leave the splat with no spacers. Um, we'll do this spacer with a two inch or with a five inch, whatever line that was. So let's do um, edit, tab, duplicate, which what does it copy and paste. I don't like that we're working so close to stuff. So I'm gonna move my crosshairs away. And maybe this time we're going back like we did the first one. Actually, no, because this one was the design and then the spacer. And I don't want this one design and spacer again. So I'm going to pick this little piece up. Oops. My little five inch piece. Modify, reposition, end point. Because I'm going to do spacer. And then design, start point. Pick them both. Move my crosshair so I can see what's going on. Again, they're not in the right stitch out order. So I'm going to hit workspace on my sidebar. Select one of them, change that stitch out. Here's my master start point. It stitches right into the next design and my, and my master end point, baseline. So that one's done. We decided we're not adding anything here. And now let's do a three inch spacer because this is already a long line there. I'm gonna delete this five inch spacer. We don't need it anymore. So file tab. And if you wanna delete just one thing in your workspace, file tab, select it close selected and that's how to do that so this one is going to go leaf and i'm going to simulate and move my crosshairs again um, leaf i'm going to modify reposition endpoint pick up my design reposition start point and now i can select them all move my lines out of the way so we can see it looks perfect in baseline so now we have all of our basic designs ready to repeat. So next thing, when I made this, I knew the quilt, I think it's 82 or 85 wide, maybe it's 75, something like that. I'd measured it first. And I want to repeat this as like a set because I'm not repeating this design, you know, one, two, three, four, five. I'm repeating a straight row of one design. So I will come to my repeat tab hit my repeats, and if you look up here, each repeat is gonna change that width. 45, 60, 75, and let's just say we're gonna make it 90. We can always crop things, so that's fine. So there, this one is repeated. We repeated it to 90, baselining it. And I'm gonna do the same thing, pick my next design, and just repeat horizontally until it's near 90. This one's 89.82. They're going to be all be a little bit different, remember, because they have different spacers going on. This is 102. There was 85 or 102. I can always crop it. It's okay. I don't have to worry about that. This one's going to not be going to be near 90, I don't think. 96 baseline, and then we'll do that last one. 90 perfect baseline. All right, so here are my five rows. There's still a few things we need to do. I'm going to zoom in. So um, they're all, they all look perfect. 
So now the next thing I want to do is I need to offset these rows. I need them all to be like perfectly spaced. They are two inch rows. So maybe I want them spaced every four inches or so. So what I'm going to do is decide which row I'm going to start with first. And it's going to be the double leaf. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let me move my screen over. I can pan this. So these are my designs, but I'm going to reset them up the way I like them. So I'm going to pick the design I want. I've selected the leaves going up and down, the double leaf. Modify, and I'm just going to move it start point. I love repositioning start point and end point. I use these buttons all the time. So maybe my second design is a single leaf. Let's do a single leaf. We'll do, uh, yeah, let's do that. So second design is a single leaf. So I'm gonna modify reposition start point. Now those two designs are right on top of each other. Now I want these rows to be every four inches. So down here in nudge, we can change this value. This is kind of a custom nudge. So I clicked on the box. I'm gonna hit four, enter. Now anytime I nudge something, it's gonna move four inches. I'm gonna hit down, way too much. Okay, so these rows are two inches. Let's nudge this three inches and see if that looks better. Oops, three, enter, and nudge it. That is better, but let's go back. Let's try 2.5. I don't want it two. I want it more than two because I don't actually want the designs to touch each line, and the designs are all two inches tall. So two and a half, I like that. Maybe, let's see, let's put two and a quarter. I can't remember what I did, and I know I changed the size of the design some. Oh, I like that. So they overlap a little bit. So if this were shifted over, they would touch, but I don't want it to touch too much. Wait, let me check two. Uh-oh, undo. Okay, I like two. Why didn't I just start with there? But this is what sometimes you have to do a little bit of trial and error to see what you like. So that one's nudged down and we're good. Remember, we haven't moved the machine yet. I'm not gonna move those crosshairs at all. Now I'm gonna pick the next design, the flower, and I will reposition, start point. And this time I'm gonna hit nudge twice. One, two. And then the next one is the double leaf. I'm going to reposition start point, and this one's going to be one, two, three. Now, when I did this, I also shifted these a little bit, or I didn't use the splat yet. I did the splat like every seven. So I did, um, oh, that's what I did. I did the, we're going to switch these. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to move this down one, and I'm going to move this down one. So it was like leaf flower, leaf, leaf. We're gonna do one more flower. So I'm gonna pick the flower design, edit, duplicate, and then now modify reposition down, 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 down. And then I repeated this section. Is that right? See, I don't even remember. It was so long ago. I think I just repeated a few of the, of the leaves. So let's do this double leaf, edit, duplicate, so this is what Pro Stitcher can do once you kind of know where those buttons are. Let's duplicate this leaf and the up and down leaf. Edit, duplicate, modify, down, 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 down. I think I did a total of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll work. And then we'll add the splat. Uh, where I was duplicating and just moving them, in this case I need to move the start point so it's aligned with everything. And then now I'm going to move it down again. Now the next thing, see how they're still kind of, like especially these are kind of all lined up. They, off, this is the true offset whenever you shift them, but they all look kind of jumbled here. This is where I can come in and maybe nudge this one by two inches and that one can stay. Maybe this one needs to come this way. Nope, I don't like that. Maybe it needs to go, ooh, oh yeah. Oh, that looks good. Let's see. What if this, what if those stay, but then this nudges to there? I'm going to move that. 
And let's look at the center of this design. So this is where you can kind of go in and look. And this, this space here kind of looks, there's, a, there's not a lot going on. So what you can do is you can just kind of use your nudges to shift things around. Maybe it does need to be like that. And maybe if this were shifted there, it's going to fill in this gap that looks a little vacant. And you, you don't have to shift them all by two. You can change this. Maybe I want to shift it by one. And I want this one just over one little bit. And maybe this one over one little bit. Those kind of are close. Let's see. It gets crazy, though, because you're going to keep shifting until forever. So be careful. It's like when you're rearranging blocks. And you're like, ooh, does that one look better or does this one look better? Maybe this one looks better. Oh, I like this. I like this. I think that's a good mix. Now, when you get it how you like it, these sides are just going to look like a jumbled mess. But that is okay because we can crop things. This bottom one might not be okay. Let's shift it the other way. We'll keep it where it was, but more in line with everything. And I think it was about like that. Is that right? No, because that was right next to each other. There we go. Whatever. It's fine. It is what it is. Once you like it, look at my workspace. I have all of these repeated groups. We want to select everything. Super important, make sure it's stitching out right. So that is row two and it should be, it's stitching first. This is row one, so we can switch those. And you can see how I can, it's gonna change my starts and ends when I go through here. So, um, oh, that's supposed to be number three. Or, or, let's see, go back. So this is one, two, let's find, that's four. Oh, that's the very bottom. So why don't we just move it down to the bottom? So bottom, and now I'm counting up from the bottom and you can see them changing red. Oh, good. Very nice. Uh oh, wrong point. It needs to be down one. So good, good, good. Uh oh, that one needs to go up. Oh, this needs to be three. I think we just got it. So we're starting at the top. Top row red. Next 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 row red. Super important step because what we're doing, and I don't know why I didn't hit refresh or even just zoom in so we can see this up close. Um, what we're doing, and I'm going to work backwards. So the bottom row is red, and I'm selecting them in my sidebar, and I'm just saying which which repeated group is this? Oh, that's the offset leaves, second from the bottom, third from the bottom, perfect, fourth from the bottom, perfect, fifth from the bottom, perfect, sixth from the bottom, perfect, seventh from the bottom, perfect, eighth from the bottom, great. So now that this is lined up correctly, I can go and hit my baseline, and now this is the group that I'm going to save. File, save, I'm usually gonna save a workspace and this is gonna be blah, 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 whatever quilt it is, Y World Quilt, or um, this was Bloom Robust. So now to use this, you've set this design up, you've custom made this edge to edge scrappy design using this wide world, wide rule sets, which I love, I think it's fantastic. It's, it's such a great idea. So now when you're using this, you set your design up, you're going to set your workspace up just like normal. We're, uh, not workspace, I'm going to go to area two corner. Area two corner. This quilt is going to be um, 75 by 86. I don't know. How about 92? So it looks more like a quilt. Oh, I typed it in. I have to click it on the screen. Um, I'll hit refresh so I can see everything. So now here's my quilt. I set it up in Pro Stitcher. I'm going to open my design. Just drag and drop it over. Because I'm going to crop this. Remember, I made it too big on purpose. And now I can select it. And Pro Stitcher reads this as one design. It is already baselined. So when I go to modify repeat, or when I go to repeat, I don't need to go to modify. I was reading it. Um, when I go to the repeat tab, I don't need to repeat horizontal. 
I don't need anything coming out this way. We already have it too big. It's already bigger than our square. What I do need to do is repeat vertical. And all I have to do is pop my repeats in. You know me, I love to crop outside the lines. I'm going to zoom in, maybe here, and do my drag and drop. So I'm gonna drag, simulate, I need to find where, hold on, before I hit drag, I need to have my crosshairs here. So I'm gonna simulate moving this down. Do I want that first row to, get, to crop anything? Not usually, so there I go. Drop it, making sure everything is outside on the right and left, and then deciding, do you see how it's gonna crop that little piece right there? I could drag and just, oh man, see what I did? Simulator, it's simulator. Well, undo. Um, you have to move at the crosshair point, which I didn't do, so now I'm gonna drag and just shift that over just a little bit. So now I'll use my scroll bars to make sure nothing's getting chopped off. And you shouldn't have to scroll all the way down. Come back to the other side, make sure nothing's getting chopped off on this side. That side looks good, but we do have to bring it back to the top. Oh, my drag and drop is still on. Look at that, I'm doing all these noob mistakes. Oh my gosh. Turn, drop it, drag it, sorry guys. It's just, it's simulator. Simulator. Okay, let's shift that over. At my crosshairs. I'm such a newbie. There we go, drop. Now everything looks good, great. Everything looks good on this side. I don't care if the bottom is too long. I'm going to crop it off anyway. And I might have to crop a design. It is how it is. If I know I'm going to crop a design at the bottom, which most likely is going to happen, I could crop off the top. So maybe I'm going to move my crosshairs where I want. Hit drag. And I will purposely cut this one off. Purposefully. Make sure I didn't do that over there. I want to shift this over to the right just a little bit. There we go. Refresh house. It looks like a lot of little tiny lines. Get my select tool. Modify crop outside edges. And what do we always do after a crop to make sure it's good? baseline. And there you have it. This is a custom loaded wide rule set that no one else will have. They might have these designs but it will never look the same as what you just created because you're putting in spacers and you're moving things yourself. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you did learn a few other things like how to combine designs and how to rearrange designs when you are in your stitch out. Um, we set up that edge to edge, cropped it, and I would just go to Pro Stitcher and hit run when I was ready. Uh, we will see you all back here in a second. All right, everyone. Um, thank you for watching. You're probably thinking, why is he outside? Isn't it 100 and something? And it is currently 104. It's very hot but I started cleaning my sewing room and now I can't really get in there and the tripod's not gonna fit in there. Um, I'm starting to index my thread and put it all where I think it might go, but I have to be able to get around the long arm tomorrow because we have someone coming in to hang a TV. But, um, what? Oh, so thanks for watching. Pro Stitcher Designer, or not Pro Stitcher Designer, Pro Stitcher. What did we do today? We um, combined designs, we um, made kind of a custom uh, custom repeat because we were able to put like the seven lines together. Um, we rearranged the stitch order when we had multiple items. Gosh, we did a lot. And um, yeah, crazy. We made our own custom edge to edge design. I was very excited about it. Uh, make sure you check out those wide rule designs by Quiltable. I'll link it below. Um, if you're interested in the bloomer bust, a picture of the quilt here. Uh, that was the finished quilt. 
but I will also link Beth and Eva Page Quilt Designs below so you can check those out. Um, and oh, with the designs, I'll do the set and then I'll do the bloomer bust designs too in case you are one of the bloomer busters um, who are making the quilt and you're ready to get that thing quilted. Um, there are some other bloomer bust designs available. They just weren't the wide rule and that's what we used. And um, I was stressed when I first looked at it and then I was like, hey, this isn't that bad. So sorry the video is a, lot, a little bit long, but as always, thank you for watching. Uh, my mom enjoyed the intro. She's so, so silly, but uh, we've been having a lot of fun here. So we'll see you all next week with a new video. And at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to have a good time. Bye.